Hey everybody, let's talk about the foundation of procedural content. It's very easy to fall in love with an algorithm. Oh, how do I make a million worlds? Oh, here's how. Oh my gosh, look at all these beautiful worlds I'm creating. They're so beautiful. How do I create a million maps, dungeons, monsters, the population of London? Oh, look at this power at my fingertips. I am generating lives. Oh, I am a god. Sure, it's very easy for the dev to fall in love with this stuff, but the player won't give a shit. And that's why the foundation of all proc gen, before you even get started with trying to choose an algorithm, is to ask what the heck you're doing. How is the player going to engage with this content you're creating? Because if they're not going to engage with it, then don't create it. Just put in some background fluff. Now, the problem with this question is that although it sounds easy, it's actually quite hard. Not only can you ask the wrong question, but you can give the wrong answer. And even if you give the right answer, you can forget. I'll give you an example here. You're generating planets. You've got a million billion completely unique planets, and they're all beautiful. And you know the player is just going to absolutely love all of these planets, right? It's going to be a wonderful creation that you've put together for them. And... Uh, Everything's going to be hunky-dory, and you're definitely going to be getting rave reviews, and you're, you're not going to be getting slammed at all. What's the player doing on the planets? Why would the player need these planets to be generated? How is the player engaging with these planets? Because if they're not engaging, just draw some planet sprites, put them in the background, and say, hey, look, those are some cute planets you got in the background, but you're not going there. Oh, well, there's resources on the planet. Like, here's some Arctic fungus crystals, whatever. They're going to need those. They're going to visit the planet to search for Arctic fun. Hold on. You're answering that the loot is what matters. In that case, generate the loot. Borderlands did it. Works great. You don't need to generate the planet if you only need to generate the loot. So, what matters about the planet? Oh, uh, now it's starting to get a little bit more complicated, isn't it? Any kind of map you generate, what matters is that it's the map. There's going to be the player moving through it, or building on it, or some other topological constraint. So, what matters about visiting the planet? Now, there are a lot of potential options, like, oh, you have a limited amount of resources on your flying saucer, so, you know, you land somewhere, you got to choose where you land carefully, and then go out and grab stuff and get back before you die or whatever, run out of time, run out of energy, whatever it is. That's great. It's a great answer. It's the same answer that No Man's Sky gave. The problem is, they didn't actually generate planets with that in mind. So they gave the right answer, and then they failed to actually create a proc gen system that would do anything about it. People want the, 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 these, these resources, and they have limited resources to get these resources, and then the planets, so we're just going to generate them randomly, whatever. You have to generate the map based on the challenges you want the map to provide. You can't just rely on pure luck with a completely unrelated generation system. <sighs> There are lots of other possibilities, like, oh, this is a game about racing through these ancient scars that were carved into these planets by uh, an ancient race of, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, spider monkey arachnid um, cyborgs that, you know, had space lasers. And they carved holes in these planets and then laid their eggs down in the core. And you need to get there because they're hatching. Oh my gosh, race through the caverns. Quick, 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 you gotta shoot the, shoot the eggs before they hatch. Now you're generating the scars. You're generating these valleys. The rest of the planet comes along for the ride, but what matters is the layout of those scars because they're what you're engaging with. And yes, it contains loot and enemies and things to see, but those aren't the core thing you're generating. Those just come along for the ride. You see? There's lots of other options, like, oh, yeah, we well, want to be able to build unique bases on each of these planets, so the topology has to allow us to build a unique setup, uh, and there, therefore each planet has to have a unique 
topological constraint system that makes us build bases with different considerations, very distinct considerations. It's another good example. Whatever you choose, if you choose something that's not the planet, then you can just generate whatever that is and not generate the planet. And if you choose something that is the planet, then you should be generating the planet with that in mind and not just to look pretty. This is uh, not exactly a new idea. We've seen thousands of games come out that have this in mind. For example, um, any game that has a, a node graph system of choosing your path through the galaxy is uh, uh, knows that this is what's up. They're, they're creating a randomly generated galaxy on the cheap by just focusing on the decisions that matter. That's you know, FTL style. It works great. But it doesn't require us to talk about planets. We could be talking about dungeons. We want our dungeons to be interesting. So what are the reasons that you know might make a dungeon interesting? What are the, what's the player doing in the dungeon that matters? Fights. The, the player is getting in fight. Uh, stop. Stop. If that's what matters, then you can generate the fights. You don't have to generate the dungeon. You can just use a couple of prefab dungeons with some very basic variants and fill them with fights. Treasure. Well, same thing. You can just put the treasure in random spots in the same set of dungeons. What matters about running through the dungeon is that desperate attempt to reach the end before you run out of resources. Your health is low, your mana is running out, you're out of health potions and you, your torch is low. There's some monsters ahead, can you take them on? Can you sneak around them? Can you run away? What's he gonna do? That's what's compelling about most dungeon crawls. So that's what you're going to have to generate. And obviously some of that is random, but we also know that you can take fairly simple approaches and do the same thing. For example, Rogue, 40 year old game. Yeah, lots of random stuff, but they also understood how to weight everything with the understanding of what sort of part of the dungeon you're in, how far along you're expected to be, uh, what sort of resources you're expected to have. And they would drop in vast chunks of map that would be prefab. Like, oh, here is the, the entire level that's about that weird um, fountain. And, you know, here's the entire level of ghosts. Here's a sub-level that involves, I forget, a dragon or a minotaur or something, and it's still got some random stuff around it. These hand-authored chunks allowed the game to keep control over the pace of the player's progress. And if you think that was uh, too old or too uninteresting, you haven't played it. Well, Diablo did the same thing. Diablo created its random dungeons out of giant tiles of hand-constructed content, following specific rules about what fits where and what kind of uh, beat you're in, what kind of uh, challenge you want to give the player at this point. Same idea. And so did Splunky. Splunky did the same thing. You don't need a really complicated algorithm to do this stuff. You need to understand what you want to give the player. What are they going to be doing? And if it's a map, they're going to be moving through it or building on it or something like that. The same thing is true if it's not a map. If you're trying to generate the population of London, what about the population of London is going to be engaging to the player? What's the player doing with the population of London? How is the player engaging with them? Oh, the player is stealing from them. So... Okay, well, if the player is hacking them to steal their stuff, how are you generating long-term and medium-term complexity and goals? Oh, you're not. You're just reading off of a checklist. That's not procedural content. That's just content. The player can recruit them. Each one of them is unique. You're just reading off a checklist again because none of the recruiting systems are linked to any kind of medium or long-term procedural content generation. There's no... There's no thing that fits together or creates protracted um, conflicts or, you know, you, you get this guy so you can get this guy so you can get this guy so you can get this guy. All of that stuff has been really never implemented as a procedural part of the game because the game is about shooting people, right? So you, uh, you in the, at the end of the day, you want the player to shoot people and that's your focus and randomly generating the population of London is... Not really very tightly related, which is why it feels so flat. 
Now, can you come up with some good ways to do random content generation for the people of London? Sure, but you have to answer the question of what the player is doing and then try and generate something that makes that interesting. So if you are trying to go through London with your little um, cult, you can go in and recruit people, but you know similarly, you want to avoid accidentally recruiting people who are on the enemy's side. And then you can move against each other, but what it is is it's a giant social terrain. And you, you can signal that with visuals, like, oh, this person is dressed like a businessman, so either he's a businessman or he's pretending to be. This chunk of London is owned by the businessman, so you need one to, to get in. You can generate that kind of stuff pretty easily. It's not incredibly challenging, but you do have to understand what you're trying to generate. And if your game is about shooting people with guns, then randomly generating unique people with their own backstories doesn't seem like it's going to be a terribly good fit. And that's why you always have to ask these questions before you even get started. It gets so easy to fall in love with an algorithm, but these algorithms do not create the game. You create the game. And you need to choose algorithms that will help, or choose no algorithms and just make everything very basic and cheap, because that's the way you get the games done. At least that's my opinion. Let me know what you think. Bye.